If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to the New Chemist podcast. We're glad you're listening. Feel free to download this podcast on Spotify and Google Podcasts and other platforms. Here on the New Chemist, we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. We're happy you're tuning in. My guest today is Vincent Miranda. Thanks for joining me today. It is so good to hear from you. Just briefly, I'll inform my audience about you. A good friend and a good colleague of mine, an intelligent young person, Vincent Miranda graduated valedictorian in 2017 from Northwood High School in Napanee, Indiana. Vincent Miranda graduated in the spring of 2021 from Taylor University, and he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in biochemistry. He is currently enrolled in Indiana University School of Medicine, and I'm sure he will do well, and I wish him all the best. Please welcome Vincent Miranda. Thanks, Vincent, for joining me today. It is so good to have you as a guest today um, on this podcast. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, me and Vincent go way back. We go all the way back to 2018. Is that is that, is that right? Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Yeah, well, I was just a, a fresh chemistry student. Yeah, didn't know up from down. Yeah, didn't know up from down, but he knew his way around the lab. So I would say a really good friend of mine, a close friend of mine, and a really intelligent uh, young person. Um, so what have been your long-standing interests in the field of science? I think just starting from mainly in high school when I really took a took an interest to science and um, the different fields of science. I have always wanted to use my knowledge and what I've learned just to help others. Um, you know, I think everyone kind of has their niche where they just feel comfortable. And for me, that's been the field of science. And so to be able to use that, to be able to use what I learn and what I know um, to then impact others in a positive way that's kind of been um, one thing I've really tried to do okay so so you're interested from also from your career profile I could see you're interested in the translation aspect of science as it pertains to science impacting society is that correct yep yep I would say so yeah that's good so along that line in what way would you say have you added a creative flair to the science that you did at Taylor University? I think that the science I did at Taylor University, you know, it's, it's not a very big field or not a very big major at Taylor. So mm-hmm. um, I think just being able to take people from different areas, like for example, myself, I was able to play uh, basketball at Taylor and, and, study biochemistry as well so being able to bring that what i learned from sports and that team atmosphere that um kind of working together working through our adversity and really turn it and kind of change it into what i do in the in the field of science as well so for example in the lab something goes wrong and you know you got some options you can either just quit or you can try to figure out a new solution i think that Mm -hmm. athletic background really helped me kind of push through different adversity that came up in the field of science. And that's good that you mentioned that because, you know, many times, I think many times in my, from my personal experience, it seems as if uh, athletics and academics are like two different spheres that people rarely uh, show that they coincide. But I think if we were to take the discipline that we uh, taught and perpetuated in the field of athletics and translate that into science and show that the same way how 
act person X can be great in basketball through being disciplined and dedicated from a very early age. So likewise, mm-hmm. you can be great in science if you're disciplined, dedicated, and you coincide with your skills and passion um, from an early age. Um, you work hard, so you can be great. But um, along that line, um, how do you maintain view on the bigger picture in your career and in your life in general? When you encounter challenges, everyone has encountered challenges um, at some point in their academic career. When you encounter challenges, how do you maintain view of the bigger picture? I think for me, it's it's just taking it day by day, um, especially for for what I want to get into. You can really get caught up in very future focused and what's coming next and how do I prepare for this and am I ready for that? Um, I think that can really just cause trouble in, in the present um, if you're looking so much toward the future that you forget what you're doing now. So one of the things I like to do is just make sure I'm not looking too far ahead and just going day by day and um, making things into smaller, more manageable tasks as opposed to things that seem unmanageable and huge. Uh, and then in addition to that, I think being able to have the, the correct priorities, just knowing where my career, where academics fits into my life in general. Um, and there are things that are more important than that, even though academics is very important to me. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So um, would you say that your perspective or your stance of taking it in like day by day or in granularity, so I'm looking at the particulars of that of that specific day, um, is really confident to your success thus far. Yeah, I would say so. Um, like I said, it just it just keeps me grounded and um, keeps me from getting discouraged by looking at things that may seem impossible to to accomplish all mm-hmm. in one swoop. So breaking mm-hmm. it up into those smaller things, I think, helps me stay encouraged. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You know, John Maxwell said, while others simply go through life, I will grow through it. That's my choice and I will surrender it to no one. So yeah, we do have agency and we do have the capacity to choose. And like you said, you chose or you choose daily to take things one step at a time. And I think that compliments, you know, when you break a large task down into small, small, small parts, it makes it more feasible. It was the, I also make it more manageable in terms of I'm not dealing with this huge goal that I must achieve in this one instance. But um, at the same time, you, so just a snapshot of your career, you started off at Taylor University, a very good, um, I would say, high ranking Christian university um, that has a really strong chemistry department. You started off there, you did basketball, and now you've matriculated, you got into Indiana University's medical school, which is a very top-notch medical school. Um, what would you say, or how did you seek and find the right environment for you to thrive? Because obviously, you th- you were thriving at Taylor, and that complemented you to being able to get admitted into Indiana University. So how did you thrive, and how did you find that environment to thrive? Yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing is just the face-to-face personal interaction I can have with my professors, the people above me, and just so I can learn, that's how I learn best, I think, is in that face-to-face contact, that small group structure, or the one-on-one time with the professor. So being at Taylor um, in a department that I think we had eight or nine students in my graduating class in the chemistry department, Mm -hmm. it was a tight-knit group, and I could walk into any of my professor's offices pretty much at any time, and be able to have that one-on-one conversation with something I'm not understanding or even something totally different. So being able to have that small class size and that um, family atmosphere, I think really helped me thrive. And which is another reason why I think it'll be beneficial that I'm at actually at the South Bend campus for IU School of Medicine and not in Indianapolis or Bloomington. Because again, it's that smaller, we have 30 students in our class. And so I'm going to be able to have that that small class size and that um, personal interaction again. I believe that's good, and I hope I hope and I hope that is the case for you. Hope and pray that is the case for you. So, um, given that you uh, have a lot of responsibilities, you're a married man, preparing for med school, all this other good stuff, and you have accomplished several things, how do you maintain balance, Vincent? Are you balanced, Vincent? Would you say that you are striving to be balanced? 
I think so. I'm definitely striving to be balanced and um, on a day-to-day basis, sometimes you might get a little off balance, but I don't think that's, that's anything too abnormal. Mm-hmm. Um, so just, that's another thing where I think basketball has really helped me because in, in college and even before that in high school, I really had to work at, you know, balancing my schedule, managing my time, making sure that school got done and that I was giving my best effort on the, um, on the athletic field or court. So just kind of using that time management skill and things like that to make sure you have the right balance and stay grounded. And that's another thing too, just having good friends, good family that mm-hmm. they're, they'll tell you when you're, when you're out of line, when your mm-hmm. priorities aren't straight. And so having that support system has been huge for me, my family, my wife now, and all my great friends like you, David, just making sure that I'm, I'm kind of on the right path and, and going in the right direction. Yeah, man, you're a good friend of mine as well. And I think one of the things that complements to understanding balance is that balance is not, I've spoken to many people about, 30 different people about the same concept. Uh, balance is not, that doesn't make me an expert in it, by the way. It makes me someone who can discuss it. So balance is not a static uh, stance on instance. Balance is dynamic. Just like resilience, just like mental health. All those things incorporate, you know, addressing the stresses that you face, finding a way to manage and adjust to them, and then proceeding forward with your life. So, you know, Frederick Flack said that the most encouraging observation I've made over the years is resilience or what you want, whatever you want to call it. Balance is a strength most of us can develop with thought and practice. So, you know, those things, um, of course, I summarize his words, but those things, they require thought, they require practice, and they require uh, progress through time. So it's not something that you achieve in one instance. So yeah, I agree with you. So I would say in many regards, you have been successful as a student in the field. What has complemented to your success thus far? And what do you think will complement to your success in medical school? Is it a personality thing? Is it a skill set thing? Is it a knowledge and acumen thing? What would you say is that factor? Of course, Mm -hmm. both of you and I being people of faith, we attribute our success to uh, who we believe in. But um, what would you say is the factor for when it comes to your practical, physical, day-to-day life as confidence your success? Yeah, I think um, the personality I've been able to develop just from my life experiences, uh, being the youngest of, of three boys and then uh, being in athletics all growing up and then just the support system I have from my family, mm-hmm. um, all those things kind of mold, molded me into who I am today, someone who's you know, willing to take chances, willing to have those hard conversations and and push through adversity. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just being able to, I think one thing that that will help me going forward, you know, there's a lot of people maybe that are in the sense of book smart, uh, much smarter than I am. But I feel like with the experience I've had, the jobs I've been able to work, the shadowing opportunities I've had, I've been able to kind of witness and see what it takes to be successful in the field of medicine. And so all those different things I think have, have set me up pretty well for uh, going forward in this field. So, yeah. So another thing that I've heard people mention um, as I've interviewed them is the use of Anki, the use of sketchy, mm. the use of Picmonic. All those are platforms and software uh, that allow for reinforcing your learning in medical school. So Mm -hmm. how have you maintained vision and teamwork in your environment while at Taylor and um, even in your personal life, how do you maintain vision and teamwork? I think kind of sometimes you have to really stop and and swallow your pride because being in, being a good student and, you know, sometimes things do go your way. And at those moments, you can't let, you can't get too proud and think that you can do this all on your own. And I don't need God. I don't need any other people around me. I'm doing this all my own. And whenever you start to teeter to the, to that thought process, I think it's when, like I said before, you have a good support system that says, wait a second, you didn't get here all on your own. You know, you, you have a good support system with you and you don't want to ruin that. Um, And just making sure that you're, you're, not too proud to ask for help sometimes mm-hmm. i agree like i heard i was interviewing an administrator at georgia tech and he made the comment 
his, his concern is not about being right. He just wants to make sure that he gets it right. Mm-hmm. He wants to make sure he's in the right position. He's achieved the right goal. He has got uh, achieved the thing that is needful at the time. So why did you choose biochemistry? Be more specific. Why did you choose biochemistry as a field to major in, Vincent? What complemented that decision for undergrad? I think for me, so it kind of starts back to when I was in high school. Okay. Really, I had a great chemistry teacher and really enjoyed learning about the sciences. And um, then after that, I was able to shadow or I had an internship at a hospital my senior year of high school and kind of got to see the different parts of medicine. So I was thinking, you know, where, what can I do? Where can I go to integrate this chemistry, these sciences that I love so much, as well as the field of medicine that I love so much. And so then that's kind of when I settled on, on biochemistry as opposed to a biology major, which a lot of pre-med students are, mm-hmm. or just a chemistry straight up. So I really thought that by doing biochemistry, I could integrate those things that I love um, respectively and, and kind of go from there. Okay, that's good. So why medicine? I'm sure you got this question before. So I like to hear you. Yeah. Ask, why is yeah, so, medicine, Why medicine? I think uh, one of the, the big things that kind of led me into medicine was just some experiences I had when I was younger. I was uh, able to see my, my grandfather kind of go through the digression of uh, dementia when, when I was probably eight or nine. And so that was kind of one of the first things that really interested me in medicine. Obviously, at the time, I was mourning and um, it wasn't easy for my family to, to watch that happen. But looking back on it, I think that's one thing that maybe even subconsciously really triggered me to have an inkling towards the field of medicine. And then, like I said, the I knew I had a, a kind of an idea that I wanted to go into medicine. I thought maybe in high school, maybe I'd go work in a lab, something to do with chemistry. And then I had that internship where I was able to, I was able to see, spend some time in the operating room and the emergency room, uh, radiology, all different aspects of the hospital. And at that point it kind of solidified. Yeah, this is, this is something I'd like to do. I'd like to use what I know about chemistry and science and uh, use it in this field of medicine to then help people. Yeah, I agree. So what specialty is your, are you leaning towards? If you, had, if you were able to pick one today, you had finished medical school, and you had developed a documentary with a skilled medical student that you will be, hopefully in mm-hmm. um, What specialty would you choose today? I'm just curious. Yeah, I think if I, if I had to choose something today, you know, I'm really open into whatever, when I go through my patients, sparks my interest. Mm-hmm. But if I had to pick something now, I think I would pick neurology Oh, yeah. Just on the fact that I really am infatuated with the brain and how complex it is and everything that's going on there. Um, I actually started out at Taylor with a psych minor, okay. but then dropped that because I wasn't able to. It was just going to be a, a workload I wasn't willing to commit to adding that minor. So then yeah, I, yeah. but I did, I was able to take some psychology classes. And again, it just, blew my mind just the complexity of the human brain and um how there's so many things that we don't know about it and so many diseases that right now don't have any cures or anything like that and mm-hmm. um, i think it's a field that that is there's a high supply or high demand and i'm hoping i can um help with my future colleagues to meet that demand that's fair that's fair it's good that it worked out eh yeah <laughs> work, work together for good Romans 8 and 28 yep. yep but um do you have any advice to those wanting to pursue the field that you're currently studying in or uh i would that you're about to embark in on the, the field that you studied in yeah yeah i would say just get as much real world experience as possible um to really know because you don't you don't know you may have an idea, you think, oh yeah, I, I like this, this sounds interesting. But until you really kind of get your hands dirty and, and have that experience, for me it was like I, I interned at the hospital and then a couple of years later, I worked as a nursing assistant at that same hospital. And so that aspect of it, you know, you see, you're able to see the, 
the almost the bottom of the totem pole in the medical field on your way to hopefully one day the top of the totem pole as a, as a doctor but really it's kind of wrong i guess i would say to see it as a totem pole i think it's a more um, progression a progression yeah it's it's people all working together you know you need everyone on board from the the nursing assistants all the way to the top physicians you need everybody on board thinking the same way using that teamwork to do what's ultimately best for the patient mm. and so then i did that in this past year or so i've been able to work at um, our county jail in the medical department to be able to have that experience and i think all these different experiences and just being thrown into the into the fire um, in the medical field has really solidified my passion for medicine and um, so I would say people coming in thinking they might want to do medicine just put yourself in in the shoes of a medical professional and really give it a try yeah that's fair that's fair so um what has been some of the most beneficial advice that you have received some of the most beneficial advice you have received to date? I think that one thing for me, uh, I was able to shadow a doctor or a physician here and around my hometown. And what he said to me was that the, the process of um, taking the MCAT and preparing for medical school, things like that, that's the hard part. Once you get in, you know, you're a good student. You're obviously a good student if you got in. So you can kind of breathe this, uh, or take a breath of relief when that happens. Um, so just making sure that you're not getting overwhelmed, you're not getting too anxious or worked up for the school. And just kind of, like I said before, taking it day by day. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's very good. Um, anyway, Vincent, thanks so much for joining me today. It was definitely a pleasure to have you on as a guest and a good friend of mine. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is The New Chemist, where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I. Thank you.